It's your bud, ABT Pro. And what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to do a head, or more so how I do a head. And um, there's a lot, this is for my Facebook group, ABT Pro group on Facebook. And uh, I sell Ready Rigs DVD with electric image rigging tutorial DVDs for $85 if you're interested. I well, highly recommend that you get that because um, it will help you. Uh, it, Electric Image is a very fast, easy, quick render uh, animation program. So, so, onward. So, I'm going to teach you how some people I will be teaching how to do a head. Some people. They've done they've done this kind of stuff before, so I'm just gonna. You might find a couple of tip, tri uh, tips or tricks or something like that, you know. So something that could be helpful, and that's what this is about. And this is a quick scalp, uh, sculpture that I did, and I didn't really focus on what the look of the character. I was just picked it up and wanted to just re-familiarize myself with ZBrush and sculpting since I haven't done organic characters this year and it's October so I needed to refresh myself and one of the things I did I forgot you know the basic the basic sculpt so this is gonna help me as well but and the way I did it I didn't put any eyes and then I got some weirdness with the eyes here and you can see the geometry is bad there. So this will help with this. But it's just going to be a preliminary kind of thing to get you going. And more so, what I want to do is go over the different brushes and show you which brushes I use and when and how that could greatly improve your workflow. I was also discussing this with a member of my team, or a member of my group, our, uh, and he, he brought us some interesting points that I want to share and show you some of the nuances with that as well. So, onward. So, I, so this was a, just a quick doodle that kind of wound up always turning on. And I got to remember, I don't do quick doodles. It's never, it's never quick doodles. It's going to turn on the sun. So, what I want to do first is just load up the brushes. And then also, I want to load up this polysphere now I'm using 4.0 right now and I'm gonna change this back this is the thing that uh, uh, a lot of people have a problem with ZBrush they don't hit that button Z, ZBrush is just an object oriented interface it's not really three spaces like in most 3D programs you will see three different uh, viewports to the side front you don't see that it's just one and you work on the object so but it's it's almost like a 2d flat canvas and then it's just 3d if you turn this button on or off so if you turn this button off you won't be able to do anything so it's the edit button so make sure you do that and you'll be on your way okay I'm just gonna change this back to the gray and I use that polysphere in the light boxes where you get that under tools I use that because uh, because if you look at this this one it has it doesn't have like poles like as if you go to this 3D sphere which has this big north and south pole so this is why I use this one okay and so those poles are what probably cause a problem with the eyes and the lids. I probably got stuck on a pole, so I had to uh, retopolize it. So what you want to do is get this in an area, hit shift, and get it in an area that is kind of okay. Uh, so, so this is a very free sculpt, and, and, and the first thing I'm going to do is load in a few brushes. And what I like to do is take these brushes over here, and I clicked on go to the brush palette, click on this little pointer, and it'll put my brush on this side, which I generally like. And then I can see a lot of the brushes. And what you see here is smooth H uh, polish brush, uh, another smooth, a soft warm, 
And here are some other great brushes, clay tubes and dynamic trim. And these two are similar and there's a little difference and there's a move and there are a couple other brushes. So that's gonna be an instrumental. And so the move brush, if you click on here, you'll see all the other brushes. And clay brush is another nice brush. Let me think of, oh, there's another brush. I don't know if it's in here. I held the D down. No, it's not here. You gotta go back up to Lightbox and you go here into brushes and go to Damien Standard. And that's a sharp cutting brush. And so I wanna explain the brushes a little bit first. So one, uh, one of the main brushes is the standard brushes here. And, and then there's the move brush. And so these are the first two brushes you generally uh, wanna use. And so, and then there's um, the clay tube, which I you can build up surfaces and cut surfaces, build and cut. That's why it's a, I use it over the trim dynamic. And then I come back to the clay. Uh, so, but they're all great brushes and all needed at certain times. The Damien Standard is a nice brush for getting really sharp point lines. And then there's one other brush, which I'm going to hold down the P, uh, and then I'm going to go to Pinch. And so that's another brush. Now, that's basic, the basic brushes I would need to get started. So, often I hold down the space bar and it'll give me the size and then I'll hit an X and so my symmetry is actually the wrong way I go over and transform uh, my mirror symmetry I gotta get this in a way that I have it mirrored to the other side in the direct so you're gonna move your ball a little bit to get it so then I just start to rough out uh, the basics of the hair basically this is my center line so now I'll start to make this big enough so that I can just start molding the head. Uh, and, and, and I'm gonna do this really quick, so it's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna look like much, but it doesn't take much, and you can just start moving this. I'm also using a Wacom tablet on my icon, and it uh, on my iMac, and it feels really different from the regular Intuos Wacom that uh, you normally use. So. It has a bit of a felty feel, whereas the other one is a high polish. So also, there's a, the smooth brush over here. If you just hold down the shift key, you can just smooth things back. Uh, this feels, this brush, this way kind of feels really weird to me. I don't usually work on this station, but this is the recording station. So basically, you want to just make out the head and make out the rough, roughness of the head, okay? And so, so just an oval egg with a little bit of a point there and where the forehead might be there. And so, so and then the back of the head. And then you might pull something down for the neck, but I don't generally mess with the neck when I'm doing this. So I'll smooth it out a little bit, just roughly. If I hold shift and click and move in the background, it'll still hold the, fr the uh, frame. So. I'm eight minutes in, and I just basically taught you the main brushes. So then, then you can use a standard brush. And the nice thing about it, if you hold the option, you can kind of get an indentation as well as the outside. And so a lot of people use the standard brush, and it's good. I used to use it a lot. And so when I start the sculpt, what I do is I just do... You want to look at it as doing forms, not contours. So you don't want to go and try to do the mouth or do the eyes or something like that. It just generally is not going to work. You know, it's not going to look that great for you. And so you do that, but you are smooth. Okay. Notice I haven't subdivided or anything like that. But instead, of, I used to use the standard brush a lot for it. Now I almost exclusively use the clay tube brush. And the reason why is because it builds up the form really nicely and it cuts the form. And so it's sort of like the dynamic trim, but it, it has a nice way of doing it. And it's, it's really controllable. And I could just go in one spot and just build up that form. And so it just gives me a feel of building the form. And again, I'm still just cutting, cutting the form 
cutting into it where I want, let's say, the bones for the um, the cheekbones and things like that. And then there's the muzzle, the whole muzzle of the mouth area. And so I build that up, the nose, and then the cheekbone, uh, the chin, and then the cheekbones again. I'll, I'll, I'll start to cut in and chop that in. And then, you know, from the eye sockets go in there. And this is where I messed up before because I, I was focusing on the eye sockets in that area and and not not doing like the eyes. You should have something for the eyes. But, you know, first I like to get this in really nicely into the nose and then make sure I pull out for the cheek. I notice I'm building a skeleton. I went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art once when I was in uh, New York, when I first got to New York, and I started looking at the paintings, and I noticed that, that you know, they're really, they're really, the masters used to just do skeleton and put skin on top. So that's the kind of uh, philosophy that you want to have when you do this kind of stuff. And so, so as you can see, and when you take art and art and anatomy, that's basically what they have you do. Uh, is just do a skeleton, and so then you can smooth it down with this brush and and bring it back up. And so it's very easy to start doing it, and even for the ears and the head. Now I'm not gonna go away a lot into it. If you get get the brush too big, it starts that it starts to act a little wonky, but. Um, but basically, you can kind of rough out the shape of the whole uh, of the whole in that, uh, object you're making with the uh, with uh, this brush. So you know, basically, whatever you know about a head or a head sculpt will start to show uh, show or will start to show through when when dealing with this. So I've done a lot of tutorials and I've I've watched a lot of different ones. And they all do it different and but slightly similar ways. So this is just a way to uh, help you get started with that. So this, uh, so and then you just refine it and build it. Now I'm not gonna make it again perfect, but you just kind of want to place in the in the areas and in, in inner areas of the that skeletal structure, and and it'll pretty much come into place. So make your nose, and then. But after a while, this this will start. You know, you can run a brush to it as far as you can get it, and then you know, after a while, it starts to become clunky. And so, but you know, you can do a lot with this. And then you might want to up this the vision as well. But at that point, you still want to get the forms for the eyes. And this is what I didn't do. And this would have just in general would have helped me. Uh, when I was doing the other one, so so that's one of the main ones that I use to uh, one of the main ways that I start, and I just I will just keep working this kind of area here until I'm you know until I'm done, and like I say I don't have it's not an end all be all I don't have a absolutely one hundred percent set way, you know so depending on on how I feel it that. That still takes precedence over um, what it is exactly of how I'm trying to do this. Uh, there used to be a time when you could just flip back in the old version. You could flip back to the old move brush. And so once you get these forms, it's easier to see where you want certain things to be. And you can go back and start to build the form. Interesting thing about this particular brush is that it has has a texture to it that seems to also work as far as lighting and uh, and so and and another thing when you're building form you want the forms to kind of you know juxtapose each other you want you know them to separate in a way from each other that makes them the more definable so 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 there you have uh, have uh, just different ways of just the different shapes and that's the next thing that I want to talk about so even after you do something like this uh, you get this then you can go back with a clay brush which is like a softer form 
of the clay tubes and and then you can just kind of build the form but the nice thing about it is that it has a building it builds you know it, it makes more geometry uh, it's not like well, I'll show you this like you know you can you know, like as in I was saying juxtapose in space and there's one other brush that I wanted to show you I didn't show uh, but like let's say the trim brush you can start to cut this form and cut it down and flattens and you can make planes to kind of juxtapose the form and bring out the form okay and it's really great at that and so it'll build the planes of the different shapes because you remember you're building form it really cuts into it but it cuts a little too sharp sometimes for me but it's and so and that's good sometimes depending on what type of art or style you're doing like a con uh with a lot of uh certain art have more lines and stuff like that so uh so sharper planes might be better but because i came from an art uh from a painting background uh i tend to as opposed to as opposed to doing any kind of line art uh I, or inking or anything like of that sort i tend to use softer uh kind of brushes because i generally don't use a lot of lines so that's just uh it's just preference there's nothing wrong with one or the other it's just what one what makes you happier but again working with this like this it gives me there's like a, a type of surfacing i start to see a type of shading that is like an underlit kind of shading that really seems to help me a lot uh now i can't get too much more out of here because I don't have enough resolution so I'm gonna go ahead and and give it more resolution as you can see I can start to build up that form even more and so but again as you can see you know you can smooth it but there's you know you do need the distinction between softer and harder harder forms so uh and this again, anatomy does help knowing, studying, uh, uh, understanding bone structure. Here's the underneath, you know, I can bring the underneath parts of, of things. So the shading underneath an, a form is also great. And then I can hit, I hit that too much, I'll go back. So, so then you can smooth this out. Now there's one other brush and I want to show you this. It's going to be very so if I if I keep doing this, I'll get blobby kind of forms. And again, this is where you know this this kind of helps bring out a more stronger, straighter forms, and it's great for that. And and that's the trim dynamic, and it really helps bring it. But it kind of again cuts a bit much for me. Okay, and it kind of does it. There's a brush. That is, if I hit the F, it's flattened. And so you have a number of flattened and flattened finish, and so you can smooth. But it has a bit of a softer kind of, even though you can get the planes, it gives me a nice, softer edge to it. And so that's my preference. And so it's really good. And it helps me a lot when I'm dealing with this here, when I want to work out those forms and even, oops, didn't mean to hit that. Even like bigger forms here, I can kind of work. And then when I tend it, and, so, and it's really quick, and it smooths it out while, I, while it does it. It's not as sharp and abrasive. And so it gives me more time to look at the form and the shape I want. And what I always do, and I do this with the standard brush as well. And so I'm gonna jump back to the standard brush. I go to the modifiers and I punch this modifier up between 15 and 25 sometimes. So 15, I'm gonna use there and then I'll bring it down. And I can develop the different planes, to kinda gives it, gives it a more punchier type of uh, way that I can go in here and develop 
the different forms and the planes that I want for this character. So, and you can see the intensity is not that much either. So I can up that if I want. And again, you can see the slight rounding it gives. So I can just go through this whole thing and smooth this out and develop the planes for this. Okay? So that's just the different nuances and to each of so every artist has their own uh, thing. And so now, even still, while I'm doing this, I, I tend to go again because the, uh, the uh, clay, clay tubes brush still has a, a building, cutting kind of thing. I can still go in here and still rough this and give it another pass and, and then uh, build up some of the other forms. And you could have did this earlier on, but you know, uh, just build up some of the forms. And even with that, because I might want to cut a little bit more, I can use a standard brush and then up the modifier up again. And then it'll give me a, a, a little bit more of a, a cutting kind of feel. So I'm not really totally paying attention now. <laughs> that looks terrible, weird. Looks like a mummy. I was watching the Egyptians. But this is nice. And at the same time, it gives me a building. I can build up the form while I cut it down, cut it down in certain places. So it's nice like that. And then, so it's nice to be able to cut that in and build it up like that. And smooth this out. And then again, this, 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 this pad is a little rough for me. But then I can go and start to build up some of the other forms I want and really refine it. Like the eyes. See, I still have a tendency. I always have a tendency to neglect the eyes, and it's one of my favorite parts. But so I can use that brush to do that, uh, the standard brush, and I highly recommend that you do use the standard brush and build up the form. And so, again, this is not the very best way to do it, but you no, know, it's just a way to get the form the lot and so I'm drawing the meat of the eyelids and stuff like that underneath it maybe smooth it out okay but now the last brush and I'll show you it's it's a very sharp brush and so then you can go down and really detail yeah, and but it pulls and this is where I get messed up a little bit but if you had this geometry I mean it's still good for sketching but it's really nice it really cuts in and but you only have to cut in in a few prime areas and also the option will pull it out so get a nice cut and really bring out bring out the forms that you want uh, option or gotta be careful I get confused with the option so it can really start to and you smooth it back a little bit so I do need to study how I'm doing my eyes a little bit better so I'm just kind of doing all of this whole thing out of my head so uh, but you want to go and smooth it out and, and build the different forms up. And again, this is at a very low resolution. But as you can see, you really still get what you want out of it. So again, with that, that you get a kind of pulling with the uh, modifier brushes. And a modifier, again, is good to use with the flat brush. And so it will actually pull, even with the flat brush, it'll pull this, it'll flatten it and pull it out, and stuff like that. So, 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 and then you just keep refining it and keep working it. But there you have, uh, and you can switch in between the, uh, all the different brushes, 
where it's fine. And this is like something like this is a really good time when I want to use the uh, the uh, dynamic brush. I use the dynamic brush a lot to cut into forms because it's so sharp. So I use it to cut into forms when uh, when I'm doing stuff like um, hard body. But uh, somebody brought it up. It's a good. It's also a great brush to use when you're uh, doing something. So you can also just, you know, it's a no nonsense kind of to me, no nonsense kind of project. And you can also use it to cut forms. But then again, you still want to build build it out. And here's the last one. There's a polish brush. Is when you can really go in and start it. And so once you get all of those forms the way you kind of want it, right? Then when you got the lines there, then the last thing you want to do, and again, this is very low resolution, you uh, you, you can go and use a pinch brush and that'll really sharpen. That'll pu It pulls together some of those forms. It pulls together the lines, so it pinches them together. And so you can really get a nice, sharp, it, it pulls it together so nicely. And this is good even when you're doing mechanical stuff and you do uh, a line on it. So basically, that's it. That that basically will do it. And, you know, uh, there's all kinds of techniques and all kinds of ways to do this. So uh, this is just one and one that I hope will help you. Again, my anatomy is kind of rusty. Uh, I do need to spend more time with that, but but uh, after a while, you can see that I, I do get what I want out of it. Once I do, I work with it for a while, and uh, I start to get what I want. So, so I'm not focusing on. whatever works okay so again don't draw lines uh, and this is another thing about the clay uh, sometimes your forms can get flat especially working with uh, flattening brushes so the nice thing about the clay brush is you go across the surface to build the form in a way you want so in the rounding of the form you know so you can go across it and not just, you know, to build it up, but actually, you know, in a direction, almost like a cross hatching. And then uh, what that will do is uh, it'll keep your forms from getting flat and uh, it'll really build them up and make them, you know. So then, then you have and you can see it once you, you know, you do it and, it gets, and then you can really pull out the planes with with this one as well. So remember to go across the shape of the form. And then again, you can use the smooth or the clay brush and lightly build it back out or smooth it down. Really get what you want. And then, then come back here and then with the Damien standard, cut in some of the form. Again, this is very low resolution if I take it one more up. Then you got to smooth it again, you know, uh, so it's best to smooth it with the clay when you're working with that. And then there's a couple of other things, and this will be the final one, and this will be a 30, 30 minute one. I'm glad I got this. Deformation. You can do an overall smooth to your object, which will just, it'll just run a whole smooth on it or even inflate it a little bit and I'll show you this and this pulls out a lot of form too okay or when you're working with some of the, the higher res take it back to the lower and then make your forms again there you know you can build out your forms because you have more detail you, you, you can kind of see where things out are so build out your form in a low like that. This is I found to be really great. So and so and then so really build them out, bring it out as much as possible. 
and then go back up and start to go up again and build it out. And you can, you know, you can, it can, becomes really endless how much you can really build out your forms. And it doesn't affect like what, if you have like higher detail, then you can keep things from getting flat or sunken in. And then go up higher and you can see, and even when you know, when you start to smooth, it's, it's just, it has a better base. So, so those are just some of the main brushes that I use if I wanted to get a quick sculpt done. And, and again, some of it, sometimes I just grab something. I just want, like feel like doing something. And then all of a sudden I'm in the midst of a, of a full project, which is kind of weird, you know? So, so then again, by the time you have all this stuff set and have it the way you really want, it's just, it's, you know, it's just what it is. I'm, I am gonna, I'll probably save it, but I am gonna toss it. And then when you go at the high resolution, that's when the, the Damien standard really, I mean, you can see like the sharpness of it. And the thing about uh, that is like, with the type of work I do, you only make it sharp in one or two places, you know, the, you know, don't, you know, the way I do it, you know, so. So it's like, you know, it's just a couple of areas you make it sharp that, that defines all of the form. So I don't, you know, actually draw a contour around, oh, this is the whole eye or something like that. I don't do that. You know, I mean, it, it, this, this, that was a contour for the eye. But in general, oops, I keep holding the option key. But in general, you know, it's just one or two areas that will do it. Sometimes it doesn't work one way, you just hit the option key and go the other, okay? So, and then it's really nice, you can start to add it. And then again, with the pinch, to bring it. Okay. All right, so there you have it, folks. That's the AVT, and it's similar. I've watched a lot of tutorials. Now, this is for the face. This is not what I would actually do for the body. Uh, so, you know, and everybody has different ways of doing it. I see, I see ZBrush uh, tutorials. I don't know how they did. <laughs> you know, they even have a dot, so they don't even show like the radius of the brush. I don't know how those guys do that. You know, and. Uh, but it's great. Uh, there's been a lot of tutorials and a lot of things that has helped me and I could share that has shared technique. I, I generally like to share uh, the uh, ZBrush because there's so much out of it. I do make a living at art, so it's important that I do, um, you know, I do make money at it. And uh, uh, so here's the last thing actually while I'm working at this. Then, if you really want, you can do holdouts. So, sorry about that. So, if you wanted to go here and hold the control or whatever keyboard shortcut it is on yours, and you can hold out and mask out a certain area, and then go to the move, and then just bring it down over, you know, and then that'll give it, you know, more of a definition. It's another way of getting a, a line overlapping forms and things of that sort. So um, let's say if I wanted to hold this out and bring, or, or let's say in the nasal area, make that smaller. Option holds it, pulls it back. And then I want to just, just to be able to bring, move the nose over that area. It's just some long times. And then there's one last brush I don't know if I showed, Inflate. And Inflate is a nice, it puffies up 
it just makes things really puffy. Puffy, not it's different. And even with the puffiness, it'll bring lines together sometimes. So you want to kind of play with that. And so it's a nice way of, of getting forms to go over each other. Like puffing it up. And it's like, like the inflate the formers that I showed you. Okay. So there you have it, you. Don't forget to smooth and have a good time. And God bless you all. If you like it, like the video. Show the support. I, you know, I'm, I'm pushing up to a thousand videos now because I think I'm gonna can this YouTube hype when I get up to a thousand. Because I'm just, I'm not getting the business or the feedback, and I gotta pay bills. <laughs> so, you know, if you got something for me, you better give it to me now. <laughs> anyway, God bless you all. Have a great time. Hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I hope it was helpful. All right.